The ideal solution, as the name implies, requires to have a solution of, let's say, A and B, at least. Now, we've seen already ideal, which means very simple models and assumptions. And this is the formal definition, which I don't like that much. The average intermolecular forces of attraction and repulsion in the solution are unchanged on mixing the pure liquids. So meaning that if you add A and B, and let's say that we have B here, they repel each other and they will have their unique pattern. And let's say that A does the same. They will repel and attract each other. And of course, one will say that when you mix A and B, they will interact differently, which is typically the case. But let's say that in the ideal model, these interactions are either you can ignore them or they are pretty similar. So the actual change in attraction and repulsion equals zero. So I actually prefer defining an ideal solution as a solution that follows the following. So let's say that we want to model the density of a new mixture. We have the density of A or number one which is 1000. We have the density of number two or B, which is 800. And let's say we want to mix half and half. And the main, one of the straightforward guesses is that the density should be between 1000 and 800. So that's a very straightforward approach. Most of the cases might be true, but later on we will see that not always the case. The interaction between these two substances can make it that it is greater than 1000, which goes against our intuition, or lower than 800, or maybe not the half and half expected. An ideal solution will, in fact, have the, let's say, linear or the uh, arithmetic value. So if you mix the same amount of substance 1 and substance 2, you should get these 900 kilograms per cubic meter, which makes sense. And if this is the case for your solution, then you can assume this is an ideal solution. You can do the same for boiling points, uh, vapor pressures, viscosities, and so on. Also, another formula we will use or definition is that the solution will neither absorb or evolve, let's say will not take or absorb energy or will not, uh, uh, let's say, give off energy when mixing them. I'm pretty sure you have mixed, I don't know, maybe A and B. You mix them and then it uh, warms up. So temperature increases. This means that by definition, this cannot be an ideal solution. Now, ideality in solution requires that substances are similar in size, in structure, and chemical in nature. So for instance, you have water. In order to have something similar to that, well, you can use, I don't know, maybe this one right here that looks kind of similar even though if you calculate the molar weight it will not be that but still you can assume a uh, there will be hydrogen bonding there is only oxygen and hydrogen and so on or maybe you have hexane one two three four five and six hydrocarbons and then you have octane one two three four five six seven eight they will mix and form an ideal solution. The main problem will be if you want to mix this one right here, which contains CH. I'm talking about structure. This is a hydrocarbon, forms uh, non-polar bonds, and therefore, typically, all the chain of hydrocarbons is also non-polar. This, in the other side, you know that this forms a polar substance, so they will not get along and therefore will not form an ideal solution. In practice, for engineering purposes, we assume that many solutions or organic compounds in a homogeneous series considered to be approximately ideal, which should not be always the case. Always ensure if your solution can be ideal via models, via experimentation, and so on. Thermodynamically speaking, an ideal solution is a solution in which the enthalpy of solution is zero meaning, as stated before, will not show temperature changes, will not uh, give off or absorb heat. So the closer to zero enthalpy of solution, the more ideal a solution can be assumed. <music>